So we want to just take this time to offer a word of prayer. Yes. And we want to focus on love, but love from within ourselves. Not seeking love from anyone else, but meditate on ourselves. The love that, that lies within our hearts. Eternal and ever wise God. Yes, Father. Father, I, your servant, come before you here today. This time and this hour, giving my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, O oh Lord. Lord. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Father, I give you my praise. I glorify your name, for your mercies is everlasting. Lord, I am unworthy to even be your name. But you have seen it fit that I may be able to be alive today, dear Lord. To give glory and to give praise and to give thanks. My God and my Redeemer. I come on behalf of my brothers and my sisters online here today, dear Lord. Each and, one, each and every one of us that is here making that conscious decision to serve you, dear Lord. For two months we have been online. And I pray that it doesn't end here. My God, forgive us, O oh Father, for the daily sins that we have committed against you. Amen. Do not deal with us, dear Lord, as we deserve, but, to con but continue to pour down your bowels of compassion and mercy upon us, dear Lord. Father, I stretch my hands on the no other love I know. No other love I know, dear Lord. I come this morning, dear Lord, asking that you cleanse our hearts and cleanse our minds from all unrighteous behavior, all iniquity, O oh blessed Lord. Grant us, dear Lord, the love that we need in our hearts, you know, how do we succeed without love, dear Lord? How do we move forward without love, dear Lord? Father, this is my only plea for today. That we, your servants, can love each other unconditionally. Help us to see the good in one another. Knowing that we ourselves are not perfect we ourselves are lacking in some form or the other. Help us to have compassion. Help us to have empathy, sympathy for one another. Put ourselves in each other's shoe that we know how to walk, dear Lord. We cannot live without your love. And we can live it out to you, O oh Lord. It is not right where we are living there, Lord. Everything boils down to love. Look at the world today, dear Lord, lacking in love, blessed Jesus. For everyone online today, dear Lord, I ask and I pray, change our ways, change our actions, that we in some form may make a steady and faithful impact in the world today. That someone may see us, may see our ways, and will glorify you, O oh Lord. Dear Lord, as we come before you once again, on this day, June 5th, dear Lord, Friday, June 5th, May 2020, dear Lord, let us know that we move forward in making a renewing of mind, body, soul, and spirit, seeking you and you only, dear Lord, wanting to change the world, dear Jesus, that's out there for the betterment, dear Lord. I come before you once again, dear Lord, 
Just thanking you, oh blessed Jesus, for everyone that's on here, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for our abbess, for giving her, dear Jesus, the incentive. They're just giving her the mind, dear Jesus, the inspiration for us all being here today, dear Jesus. Continue to bless the woman servant, dear Lord, within and without to bless her, God. Dear Jesus, continue, dear Jesus, that her cup may run it over, dear Jesus, and she spreads it hand to hand into each and every one of us, O oh Holy God. And help us, dear Lord, not to just harbor it all, but to also spread the word, to spread whatever blessing that we have received, dear Jesus, not to be selfish, O oh blessed God. Give unto others, dear Jesus, as you have seen fit to give unto us. This I ask in no other name, but in your holy and majestic name, as you have taught us how to pray, our Father who art in heaven. Holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Bishop. Bishop there. Bishop Ashby. Bless the okay. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord. We glorify, we glorify the, the Almighty God yet another day, yet another hour. The Bible has taught us that our tongue is truly insufficient to give God the honor and praise that is due unto his last, last name. Amen. But we do our best um, to recognize him and acknowledge him as we move forward through this life's journey. Our, our lesson today will be taken from John, the sixth chapter, from the 32nd verse. John 6, 32. Meet me by the river, not far away. When my Lord shall call me home, happy, happy home on the other side. Meet me by the river someday. Meet me by the river someday. Meet me by the river, not far away. When my Lord shall call me home, happy, happy home on the other side. Meet me by the river someday. Praise the Lord. The first frown. Amen. Here begin the, the reading of God's holy word, taken from John, the sixth chapter, and from the 32nd verse. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread, of, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh unto me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen and not believe. And all that the Father giveth me shall come unto me, and him that cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise up, raise it up again in the last day. I will rest in the 39th verse, in all the name of in Jesus, almighty name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We give glory, we give praise unto the almighty God, as I oftentimes say, 
God gives us the word of God to bring back, uh, bring us back into remembrance and, and to acknowledge Him as our Lord and Savior, the very uh, uh, source of our strength, our guidance, our life, our just our existence. And for this, you know, we give God thanks and praise. Um, the lesson here. Um, the 32nd verse um, tells us, it says, As Jesus said unto them, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not bread from heaven, but my Father gave it to you the true bread from heaven. We know too well in the, the olden days, in the days of Moses, um, there was uh, um, when Moses took the, the, the children of Israel uh, uh, out of the hands of Pharaoh and led them into the wilderness, um, there was a time when they, they had hungered. And um, Moses called upon the true and living God, and God uh, uh, gave Moses instruction, and God uh, uh, sent manna from heaven. This is the manna from heaven, not the bread of life in which, you know, Jesus is speaking of, or Jesus is declaring himself to be. He said, the manna in which Moses, Moses gave you is, is we know too well, it, it, was, it was said to be manna from heaven, and they were given an instruction. They, they were, it, the stru instruction was, to eat as much as their belly could consume and to take nothing for the morrow. For tomorrow will fend for itself. But through disobedience and their willingness to, to, to do as God has commanded, there were some that took the manna and hid it. And the Bible tells us the next day when they opened it, all kind of worms and all kind of uh, 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 insects or whatever it may be were uh, could, could smooth, soon and, and turn into that and it was no longer good as it was purposeful but we know too well that Jesus is declaring he said I he said what my father give it to you what the true bread from heaven which is himself he's referring himself as being the true bread because the bread of life in which he's about to give you he said what if you eat of me you shall what never hunger and if you drink of me, you shall never thirst. This is the, the, the source of life. When God gives you something, it isn't something that, you know, is temporal. But when he bless you, you're blessed and well blessed. When he raise you up, you're raised up. Uh, uh, when he, he, he gives you sight to see, uh, it, it is unspeakable. It isn't temporal. But what man has to offer, it is temporal. But the gifts of God, as you say, what? The true bread. Meaning there are many false breads. Uh, it says in a 39 verse, it says, for the, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth unto the world. The bread. What is bread? It, you know, it is nece the necessity for life has been sent, uh, uh, sent and it was given unto us freely. The Bible says what come and dine. You know, it is a bread that, that, that gives us strength, that restores us, and would give us that life in which we need to overcome this world and to withstand the wiles of the devil. You know, he said he did not come to destroy the world, but he came for purpose. And being the bread of life, he will nourish us. He will supply to the necessities. This is why he's referring himself uh, as bread. Bread uh, uh, kind of satisfies the, the needs of the body, uh, so too as the water. And he being coming in representation of that bread will give us life and the necessities and the things in which we need to sustain us and to give us the, the right vigor and the right state of consciousness that we may be able to move forward according to the will of God. It says in the 31st verse, he said, Then said, he unto, then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. In other words, don't hold it back from us. You know, don't hold back this bread of life from us. You know, this uh, this this bread, we want this bread. You know, give it to us. Uh, you know, we, they, they come almost like they're anxious now. You're telling us you have something gift to, uh, good to offer us, better than what was given before. In, in other words, why are you holding it back from us? Let us have it. Uh, in the same like this and manner. I, 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 I want to make reference, you know, to Naaman was in a situation where there was also a need. Where there's a hunger, there's a need, there is a desire. And Naaman, the Bible tells us, you know, we read that lesson not too long ago, that Naaman had a, a disease, he was held with leprosy, and he went to the man, the prophet of God, and the prophet of God told him to go dip himself seven times in the river Jordan, but he found it difficult. He found the river Jordan was so dirty, and he asked, you know, were there not better rivers to, 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 to dip in or to wash? And he did not, according to the will of God. We're calling now, we have a desire, we have a hunger, we have a thirst, and God has provided unto us the bread of life, the bread that will 
sustain us. The bread that will be able to carry us through. And, and we too also, we refuse to do as God commands us. We have the necessity, the need that would fulfill all our desires, our wants, our cares. Uh, uh, but yet we do not, you know, eat. The Bible tells us, come and dine. The table is laid. The supper table is laid. Come and dine. <laughs> but yet we do not according to the will of God. You know, sometimes we ask, but you know, when God provides for us, you know, we don't want what he gives us. It tells us God has, has given unto, gi given us all that we have requested, yet we reject it in the same likeness and manner Naaman did. The same thing when God has provided him the, uh, a, a, a way to cleanse himself from leprosy. It tells us in the, in the 32nd verse, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread of heaven, but the Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. True. Read that one before. But we know too well, God is a way maker. The 34th fifth verse says, Sorry. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. You know, the bread of, of heaven is one and the same, the bread of life. If we eat of that bread, we shall live. He said what? As often as you do, eat, do this, do it what? In remembrance of me. So we, we're renewing the covenant every time we eat that bread and drink of that blood in which he has shed for us. Jesus said unto them, the 35th, he said, I am that bread. I am the bread of life. He that cometh unto me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. I am. I am the I am. He said, look on me and live. Consume that which I have, off I have to offer, and learn of me, for I am the way. He that cometh unto me. This is what he's saying now. If you eat of that bread of life, he that cometh in me shall never hunger. Are we coming to him? In what manner are we coming? He that cometh, not all actually come, for some what come and what stand in the door. We're coming into the church, we're coming into Christ, but you know we're coming halfway. We're not giving God our whole heart. We're not opening the door widely open. We're not opening our minds or, or, or willing or coming with a willingness to change. But we're just coming just because of God say come. But if you're coming, come with your whole heart, your body, your soul, and your spirit. Your heart and your mind must be indicted towards a good master. The Bible tells us, what, Come all ye that labor and are of a heavy laden, and I, Jesus, shall give you rest. This is what he says, When he that cometh unto me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. How hungry are you today? How thirsty are you today? Are you hungry enough, you know, to put aside all the cares of this world and seek after that bread of life, the which will restore you and give you that strength, that perseverance, that all your wants may be met, that that hunger, uh, that aching within you will will cease and no more uh, uh, control you or, or have you uneasy? You know, oftentimes we hear the phrase, "A hungry man is an angry man." So sometimes when we have an, a, a need for God and that is not fulfilled, anger plays it sub substitutes that love and that grace that, that is, is not fulfilled with Christ or with the grace of God. When we are not filled, you know, we leave room for the devil, you know, to, to enter within and to have his way to reign and to run and to, to, to run rampant within us. But the Bible tells us, Jesus said, you know, when he went to, to, to the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus said unto Mary, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And the question, believest thou this? Sometimes we have to, be, have to ask ourselves, do we believe? It says, he that believeth on me shall never thirst. You're thirsty today. You always have a desire. You have a dry mouth. You're always wanting for something. Believe in Christ. He said, he that believeth in me shall, shall never hunger. He, he, he that cometh unto me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. The 36th verse, he said, I said unto you that he, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. We see in Christ, we asking, you know, God reveal your, your mystery, show me what you want me to do. I am a child of thine, but yet when, we, when God has given us a child, and we have been given a purpose, 
We are not carrying it out. We, 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 we hold it. We're putting it on a shelf. We're burying that talent. We're not doing as God has given us to do. When we see somebody else doing the work, we say, you know what, God, you give me that too. But where is your work? Where, why did you not perform the task that was given unto you? Why did you have to wait until somebody else doing the job and say, well, I, you know, God, you give me that to do. I said, away with that. Away with giving, having a flower. You, have, you should have been the first to move from the very instant. If anything, somebody else should have been having you the flower, being the instrument of God, being obedient and having a willingness to move when he said move and to stand when he said stand. The 37th verse tells us, uh, uh, he tells us, he said, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. He said, all that the Father has given me shall come. You know, if you're, you're finding yourself hard or difficult to come to God, Check yourself. Ask of the Father that you be sent. Sometimes, you know, we see others going, others being called, and we kind of follow along, you know, just, you know, a friend going to go go to. But it's not like that. I've got to open your heart in the same likeness and manner that you'll be able to receive that same blessing, that you will be able to receive that same calling, that when the trumpet sounds, you know, you wouldn't be asking of any unclean spirit, where is your God? All that God has for us, no man Oh, oh, oh. No man or weapon formed against us, it shall be taken away. He said, all that the Father has given unto me shall come. Who shall hinder us? What shall separate us from God? But it says, and him that cometh in me, I shall in no wise cast out. He said, you know, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and answer, I will open unto him. And he will sup with me and I will sup with him. You know, today we're not opening that door. We're not knocking. Uh, even if the door's open, we can't timid uh, uh, concerning entering in. The Lord said, come unto me all ye that labor. But many of us are not laboring. That's why we cannot come to that for that blessing. Because we have not sown. So we cannot reap the rewards that God has in store for us. The 38th verse tells us, he says, For I have come down from heaven, not to, to do my own will, but the will of, the, of him that sent me. Have you been sent? The Bible tells us, Only they that come from heaven shall return. I know the Spirit of God that dwells in me came from heaven, because the Bible tells me in the book of Jeremiah, even before I was in my mother's womb, God had molded me and fashioned me. All this molding and fashioning, fashioning took place in heaven, and then he poured he, uh, he, he, he placed me, he, he provided a body that this spirit, that soul that lives within me, would be able to walk and, and perform the task in which was given unto me, the commandment, the instruction by the will of God. Have God um, instructed you? Have he commanded you? It, it is time that we become conscious or come to consciousness of who we are and what our purpose is. We were not created just to die. But we were created to live and to live according to the will of God, according to the purposes of God. Who has sent you and for what purpose have you been sent? You know, if you have been sent, what, have, what is your purpose? Have you been obedient to that purpose? Are you working according to the, to the reason and purpose why you've been sent? I remember when they were looking for Jesus and they did not find him. They asked him, uh, his parents asked him, why, you know, we were looking for you. And he said, why seekest thou me? He said, did you not know that I was on my father's business? On whose business are you on today? Many of us call ourselves adults. And the Bible tells us when I was a child, I, I put, as I was a child, I put away childish things. And now that I am adult, you know, we're walking in the newness of life, understanding and, 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 and <laughs> that, that, that God would be able to, to, to direct us and, and mold us according. But today, many of us, you know, we're still standing timid. We're standing, you know, without purpose and without direction. Some people say, well, I don't know what God, what my purpose is. I say away with that. You're wasting time. It is time for you to go down on your knees and call upon the living God and ask him. The Bible says pray without ceasing until he provide an answer for you. Just like Jacob did. He said, I will not let thee go until thou bless my waiting soul. We have to demand of God. And when we demand of God, we're going to receive a blessing. We have to be persistent. But many of times we are not persistent with God. Sometimes we're waiting for somebody to do the work for us. And I say, away with that. Sight shall be a portion. It tells us in the 39 verse, it tells us, it, it says, and this is the Father's will that he has sent me that all that was given unto me, none shall, that shall be lost. But what should rise up again in the last day? He said, what all 
all given to me shall shall not be lost. This is what Jesus said, you know, and, and it says all this uh, is done so that what we should rise up again. And if the word again means restoration, we were there before. It is not a strange occurrence. It is not a strange place that, that, that God wants or Christ wants to, to take us into. He said he would, that we may be re re raised up again. We have been risen up once before when we have fallen from, from grace. We have fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus has come to restore us back to our natural state. You know, and the Bible tells us what? Rise us up at the last day. And when we say the last day, what are we referring to the last day? Some, the Bible tells us, uh, who die in Christ shall rise at the trumpet song. For some will be called up where, whew, where there shall be two, two in the field, two on the house top, two at the mill, one taken and one left. This is what we're talking about, the last days. Check yourself. Make sure you, 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 you make your election sure that you're not found left here in the days of tribulation because the Bible has taught me he shall shorten the days for the very elect sake and the children of God shall not go through the, that tribulation period. The Bible tells them there shall be a day of desolation. Sometimes we say, oh God, it's so hard. Things so hard now, but we don't know what hard is yet. We are just going through a, a, a little raindrop, just a little sprinkling. But when it starts to pause, the Bible refers to it as weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible tells us it will be like unto being bitten by scorpions and will not die. We're going to suffer and suffer and suffer. I don't want to be there. We are still given an opportunity. The Bible tells us, you know... When, that, that we who are still living, we have an opportunity to change our ways and our action and make our election show up our adventure. We be heading down the wrong road of tradition. Many a time we want to follow others. But I want to tell you, be independent. There is a spirit that is within you that is directing you as an individual. And if you be obedient, it will, we would work hand in hand because the Bible tells us that God is not a spirit. Spirit is not a spirit of confusion. We are referred to as a body of people fitly joined together. If you do your work, we'll be able you know, to work side by side. The Bible tells us the rule is in a, is in a city that is compact together. We're standing and we're standing. All right, nobody's saying, nobody pushing me or shoving me. We are walking in our integrity according to our purpose. Let us be awakened from our drowsy nature sleep today. This Friday. As God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible tells us this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed unto us. If we watch the news, man is dying daily. We will hear tomorrow so many people die today. But we thank God we are not numbered with the dead. But we are still numbered with the living where opportunity is still granted unto us. Let us not waste time. Let us not waste the opportunity because there are many on the dying bed right now wish, wishing that they were in your position, not having a death sentence. But nevertheless, God, to God be the glory because he will call us what? From works to reward. That is not something we ought to fear, but that is something we ought to welcome. And only they who are in Christ truly welcome that because we know where we are destined for, but those who are not sure where they're going, do we fear that? Nobody wants to die, but we want to get to heaven. We can only get to heaven through that. It is through that we are we, we will be risen up. You have to die God's people death to be able to be risen and to enter within that place. It is referred to what I the pearly gate. The Bible refers to it as the street that pay with gold. Not that we will want, but we, it, it belongs to us. The Bible tells us he has given us dominion over everything. So Satan, when he was trying to offer Jesus, when he took him to the pedicle, and he said, what? Oh, look, as far as you could. 
He said, if you bow down unto me, I will give you all. But Jesus knows all he has already been given unto him. God, that Satan cannot offer you something that already belongs to you. Dominion, all that you have and want and desire is given unto you of God. The Bible says, ask, seek, find. But make sure you're coming with a clean hands and a pure heart that he would not despise. Spiritual family, I glory God for each and every one of us who are still aware and conscious of the coming of God because some running around and, and then taking horse on the battle, not coming to the realization that God is coming. Oftentimes we hear God coming soon, he coming soon, but he never, he, he, he ain't arrived yet. But at a twinkle of an eye, he shall come with a thief in the night, unaware and announce. So prepare ye away and make your path straight. This is the prayer of my heart in all the name of Jesus, almighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Family in Christ, thank you again for joining us today. Um, as we go forward for the weekend and then um, we'll meet again on Monday you know, for everyone to just continue personal keep the faith keep strong keep fighting don't stop fighting this is a war and a battle that we have to win especially as spiritual people these are my jesus almighty name have this have anything else we thank the lord for the shell spiritual food and most because of jesus blood that manner to our souls, we give up the breath of life, down from heaven, for Christ's sake. Amen. May the seed of grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, ever rest in the Bible with us all forevermore. Praise God for two more blessings. Praise Him above and Jericho. Praise God, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, all blessed Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Go in peace, have a great day, be safe, continue to be productive in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.